Hey guys, today we're starting Unit 4, so we're on Lesson 9.1, and we're going to start with Task 1. We're going to solve linear systems by graphing. So what is a system? A system of equations is made up of two or more equations having the same variables. You know that every point on the graph of an equation in two variables represents an ordered pair that is a solution to the equation. A solution of a system of equations is an ordered pair that satisfies all the equations in the system. All right, so a system is just two or more equations. The graph of the following system of linear equations is shown. All right, so it's give us, it gives us two equations, y equals x plus 3 and y equals 2x plus 2. All right, so we have the two lines here. And it says the solution of the system is any ordered pair that satisfies all equations. So the point of intersection is on the blue line and the red line. So that would be the point that satisfies both equations. All right, so select a phrase that correctly completes the statement below. The points that represent solutions of y equals x plus 3 are all points that lie on Okay, is y equals x plus 3 the blue line or the red line? So it has a y-intercept of 3 and a slope of 1. All right, so this one has a y-intercept of 2. This one has a y-intercept of 3 and a slope of 1. So the blue line represents that equation. All right, which point represents the solutions of y equals 2x plus 2? All right, so the red line has a y-intercept of 2. Remember, this is your y-intercept here. And a slope of 2, which means rise 2, run 1. So a y-intercept of 2, and then if I rise 1, 2, run 1, that has a slope of 2. So that one represents the red line. All right, select the phrases that correctly complete the statements. The points that appears to be the solutions of the system is, all right, so the point of intersection appears to be 1, 4. So you always do x, then y when you have an ordered pair. x, y is 1, 4. This is the point where the lines cross or intersect. Select the phrases that correctly complete the statements. You can verify that the answer to part C, that's the question right above, is correct by substituting blank for x and, so our 1 would be for x, so we want to substitute 1 for x and 4 for y into both equations, because if we're checking the system, it has to work for both equations. All right, that's all for task one. If you have any questions, please let me know. All right, continuing with lesson 9.1. This is task two. Classify systems of linear equations. All right, so there's several definitions here. Make sure that you understand and remember each of these. You can classify systems by the number of their solutions. An independent system has exactly one solution. A dependent system has an infinite number of solutions. A, an inconsistent system has at least one solution, so one or more, at least one means one or more. And a system with no solutions is an inconsistent system. All right, so if you look at these graphs, you can see that graph 1 intersects at one point, so that's going to be independent. Graph 2 has a purple line. Purple is made up by red and blue, if you know your colors from art class. So this means that both of those equations fall on that same line, so they have all points in common. So that would be a dependent solution, has an infinite number of solutions. And then graph 3 these lines are parallel. If you check the slope, it has a negative one slope and a negative one slope. If these have the same slope, they will never intersect. So that means they have no points in common. So your system will have no solution. All right, which graph shows one solution? So the graph one, one intersection point, 
that your independent graph has one solution. Which graph shows infinitely many? That's the purple line. Remember, red and blue make purple, so that's line two. And which graph shows no solution? And that would be graph three because they are parallel. They have no intersection points. All right, select the word or numbers to complete each statement, classifying each system based on the number of solutions. Graph three shows a system that is. All right, graph three has no solution, so that's the one that is inconsistent. All right, graph one, that's the one that had one intersection point, so that one would be independent. One solution is independent. And graph two shows a system that is every point's in common, so that one would be a dependent. A dependent has infinite number of solutions. All right, so graph three, or graph, yeah, graph two is dependent. All right, graphs blank show systems that are consistent. All right, so remember what consistent means? Consistent means one or more. So has at least one solution, so one or more. Graph one has one, and graph two has more than one. So graphs one and two show systems that are consistent. All right, that's all for task two. If you have any questions, please let me know. Lesson 9.1, task three. Apply systems of linear equations. Circular and rectangular tables are set up for a banquet. There are nine tables set up with 80 chairs. Each circular table has eight chairs and each rectangular table has 10 chairs, as you can see here. So they've got the visual picture here, which makes it nice. How many tables of each type have, type have been set up? How many tables of each have been set up? All right, you can model the situation algebraically and with a graph. To model the situation algebraically, first define the variables. Let C represent the number of circular tables and R represent the number of rectangular tables. So C for circular, R for rectangular. Write one equation in standard form to model the number of tables and a second equation to model the number of chairs. There are nine tables altogether. So circular plus rectangular equals nine tables. So C plus R equals nine. All right, C equals nine when R is zero. All right, so the C intercept is at nine, zero. R equals nine when C equals zero. So the R intercept is at zero, nine. All right, so C is similar to your x-intercept and R is similar to your y-intercept. This time we're just using C and R instead of x and y. All right, how do the intercepts help you graph the equations? Select the phrases to complete the statement. You can plot the point 0, 9 on your y-axis because x is 0 and you go up 9, so that's your y-axis. And the point 9, 0, you go over 9 on x and nowhere on your y. So that's your x-axis. And then connect the two points with a straight edge. There are 80 chairs altogether, 8 at each circular table and 10 at each rectangular table. So we can write that as 8 chairs at the circular table plus 10 chairs at the rectangular table equals 80 chairs altogether. So C equals 10 when R equals 0. So again, they're just plugging 0 in to find your intercepts. So the C intercept is at 10, 0. Do the same for R. R equals 8 when C equals 0. So the R intercept is at 0, 8. So your system of equations is the first equation we found above. Circular plus rectangular tables equals non-total tables. And then eight chairs at each of the circular tables plus 10 chairs at each of the rectangular tables equals 80 total chairs. Identify the point where the lines intersect. The intersection point appears to be at 5, 4. So if we come over, x is 5, 
up four, you can see the blue and red line intersect there. Hmm. Why are the lines restricted to the first quadrant of the graph? Well, we're talking about number of tables and number of chairs. So we're not going to have a negative number of tables. So number of circular tables, number of rectangular tables. So I guess we're talking about tables and more tables. But you can't have a negative number of tables. So that's why we're only looking at the first quadrant because that's where your positive numbers are. All right, how can you confirm that 5-4 is a solution of the system? Select the number of phrases that correctly complete the statement. You can verify that 5-4 is a solution by substituting the first number is 5, so that goes in for x, and the second number is your y value, so 4 for y into both equations. Remember, if it's a solution to the system, it has to work for both equations. All right, and we can check that, okay? If we do 5 plus 4, that equals 9, all right? And then if we plug 5 in here, 5 times 8 is 40. Wait a minute, was that a 5? Yep. And then 4 times 10 is 40, and 40 plus 40 is 80. So that ordered pair, 5, 4, works for both equations. This means that 5 circular tables and 4 rectangular tables have been set up. Why is using six circular tables and three rectangular tables not viable option, even though there would be a total of nine tables? Select the phrase to complete this statement. All right, so six circular tables. How many chairs go at the circular tables? Eight, is it? So eight times six would be 48 and then three times 10 is 30 so that does not equal the 80 that we need all right so when you add the product of eight and six to the product of 10 and three you get a sum that is not 80 chairs all right that's all for task three if you have any questions please let me know